I'm live again. I was daydreaming and listening to my video that I just saved before. And so now I'm walking and I'm at Maria Hilfer Kerka, Maria Hilfer, the church. And down there is the roof. I mean, maybe I should go down there because I've been there. I've eaten meals at the group before. I mean, there's some weird people in there because there's a bunch of drug addicts and derelicts and homeless people, but they're kind of nice people. And they have a foosball table in there, I think. They used to have a foosball table. And Wi-Fi and television, maybe. I've been in there for a while. And then... Uh, and that's Caritas, the Gruft. I know that, Caritas. Am I Catholic? Probably not, but maybe. <laughs> I mean, the Catholic Church did some terrible things years ago. The Inquisition. I mean, I have to go read about that again, but the... What is that? Oh, the Bridge of Sighs in uh, Venice. I mean, that means a lot to me because I was there in 1980, at least once. And I took a shitty photo of the Bridge of Sighs with a camera. And it wasn't bad at the time, but technology's advanced so much that it doesn't look very nice anymore. And plus, I think they cleaned up the bridge a little bit with the stones. And I was just in Venice, briefly, on my way back from Pisa, because the train stopped there. But it was at that other station. I got all excited because I thought, oh man, I'm going to be able to get a layover in Venice for like an hour or two and I can step out and go to that very same spot where I probably used a bathroom once before and uh, you know and get back on the train maybe but it was that other station which is a little bit out of the city I guess or out of the tourist area so I was really disappointed and I go oh man I really kind of miss being sitting in Venice, but I can come back later, maybe, sometime. But maybe not, because I might not get back there again. But I've been there at least once or twice. And honestly, I mean, I'd rather go to Milan or some other city instead of Venice, because it's a bunch of tourists there and it's all busy. And they have a carnival thing, which is kind of crazy because they all dress up in these costumes and walk around and act silly for some time. I think that already happened this year. Well, it's kind of like Halloween. I mean, people do that for Halloween, but they only do it for one day or one night. They didn't do it for an entire month. So where are we? Oh, we were selling Maria Helper Straws. Oh, and there's Starbucks. Now this one is a nice one. And I could go in there potentially because I have a free, with my gold card, I have a free coffee. Because I got 150 stars. And then I never get all the extras. You know, if you have a gold card, you can get all kinds of, like, extra cream, shots, liqueurs. I'll just kind of get it straight. And sometimes I'll ask for almond milk. But you don't need a gold card for that. I mean, why? My gold card is worthless, pretty much. What do I do with the gold card? Nothing. I get points like anyone else. And I don't take advantage of all the extra goodies because it's like why should I do that why should I waste Starbucks money because I have a gold card you know consuming a bunch of other stuff that they have to offer when I don't even like it except maybe for the sugar 
and the cream sometimes because that's how I like my coffee with like way too much sugar because it's like brain food you get the sugar rush and then you crash and you know I don't know I don't think I have diabetes which is interesting because I was at the doctor this morning and I had blood drawn with two tubes and you know I used to be a doctor and I go oh it's a purple top and a red top so what's that well the purple top is like for the CBC blood counts and everything I didn't really ask to have that done but they took one anyways and then they took a red top which is usually just for chemistries and things which would be cholesterol, liver enzymes, you know, it's SMA 12 thing, and they've changed all that now, I don't know what they do anymore, and then, uh, but, yeah, so in a couple of days, I'll probably get my results back, and I say, oh, my potassium's low or high, is that normal or abnormal, and say, well, statistically speaking, it's not unusual to have at least one abnormal result on those things, because there's some built-in error, so you know, oh, we got to repeat it. Oh, and it could be hemolyzed. I mean, that's a good explanation for a high potassium, I think, right? Hemolysis of the cells, because they get a lot of potassium inside or something, and then you go, oh, that must have been it. And then the laboratory people, they already know that. They go, oh, the sample is hemolyzed. You need to draw another blood tube, because whoever drew the blood... You know, your blood cells got messed up when they did that, apparently, or it sat around too long, something happened. So you got to repeat it. Which means i got to go back and then get another needle stuck in my arm and go, oh, why'd you have to do that? Oh, so it's 1344. That's good. It's quarter two. And I'm now, so now we're coming up on museum's quarter. And it is a nice day. I mean, you can tell. Well, everyone has a jacket on pretty much, but some people are dressed too heavily. Oh, here's a police officer. That's good. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking at other people. And then, um, what's up here? Oh, yeah. So this thing, I've never really checked this out completely, but there's a monument up here. which looks pretty innocuous. I mean, most people would just walk by this thing. You go, hey, what is that? I don't know. It's an obelisk. It's a totem pole. It's this big rectangular thing that's this by this standing upright. It's about what? I don't know. It's pretty tall. It's got some weird design on it. And then, of course, on the other side, there's probably going to be some sort of inscription that says, hey, what is this thing? Yeah, it's this thing. What is that? I don't know. You have to go read about it, but that's what it is. And that might be, I forget where it's from. That's probably from Nigeria, maybe. Some sort of African thing. And it says so. African granite, 2003, something, something, something. Now, the interesting thing is if you do a screen capture of that, or actually just take another phone to Google Translate camera, and it would translate it for you automatically, but Instagram probably does it also somehow. Because I don't know what that says actually quite yet. And then there's that. And I, I mean, I know this because I've been here before. So, I mean, I'm cheating because I go, hey, I already sort of know what that is because I know it's right there. And it's this big thing. And then this is museum's quarter. Now, here's someone playing. Oh, this is guy. Now, why does he have a horse's head on? 
Yeah, why is he doing that? I mean, that's probably so people will notice him, and then he wants to remain anonymous somehow. So he's like an anonymous accordion player dressed up with a horse's head asking for donations because that's interesting. And he just got one. Yeah. I mean, do I have money? I don't know. I can give my way back, or, well, I don't know. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a detour because I'm just wasting my day wandering around like a idiot in the city of Vienna because I actually kind of know where I'm going. And now this one, I'd have to go look this one up again. But, yeah. Well, that's Museum's Quarter. And they do have, um, this is a golf course, I think. Yeah, this is a golf course. It's like a miniature golf thing, I think. Yeah, it's miniature golf. Huh. That's interesting. And now, I mean, why not? This is museum quarter. I mean, that's always a good question to ask yourself. If you think of something, you go like, should I do this or not? And then you would say, why? And that would be like the pros. And you say, well, why not? And those were the cons. And then you'd have to like do some sort of weird calculation and come up with cost-benefit analysis and say, is this really a good thing to do or not? And you could say, yes, no, maybe. And maybe is difficult because you go like, well, what do you mean maybe? They say, well, let's try. Let's see what happens. So, yeah. Then you say, well, why not? And you say, well, why? And you go, why, why not, why not, why not? Why, why not? And say, because. I mean, if you had children, you say, we used to play that game when I was a kid all the time. And say, why? And your parents would say, because. And then you'd ask your parent, you say, well, what do you mean because? Because you said so? And they would say, yeah, because we're your parents. We feed you. We give you a place to sleep. We pay your tuition to go to school. We do everything for you. And then you say, what? When we ask you to do something that we kind of don't agree with, and you say, well, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, this is the museum. waiting for a green light so this is one of the longest lights that I've seen in Vienna because the street is wide we got three lanes one two three one two three six lanes in the middle well two over there three over here so it's like a six lane road in the middle of the city near museum's quarter so that's got to be why that one is like that. And then this is cool because I used to sleep here <laughs> at night, overnight, in the wintertime, right in here somewhere. I, mean, I forget, but and it's nice. I mean, you know. 
It is nice. And the thing is, my computer was stolen in this very area, in another, another part of the park, because I was sleeping during the daytime, and some criminal came and literally stole it under my in the middle of the day while I was sleeping. So there's the museum. Now I have a y- I have a Yadis Kata. So like, if I wanted to, I mean, I might even have it with me. Oh yeah, yeah, I have my Yadis Kata. That's because I carry this around all the time. It's a passport. That's two, and I always carry that because that might be important when you're living anywhere, really, to prove like, hey, I'm allowed to be here for now. And then if you're a citizen, I mean, it's kind of interesting because I don't understand all the rules quite yet in the EU. If you're a citizen, you probably have a lot more rights than you do if you're just kind of like a visitor from another country, which is kind of what I am, but I'm a visitor from two countries, but I'm just not a citizen of Austria. And I've kind of joked a few times like, hey, can I trade two for one? I'll give you like the US one and an Italian one for an Austrian one. And that'd be stupid because The U.S. one is still useful and valuable in some ways, but, you know, sort of depends. And then, now here's Mozart. I mean, a lot of people don't really care about Mozart because they go, oh, well, you know, he lived a long time ago. He's a famous child prodigy composer. He's got cool music. And there's a statue of him in Burggarten. I mean, there's a much bigger one in Salzburg because that's where he was born. And which is kind of interesting because in the big scheme of things, I mean, that's Mozart. Big deal. It's a statue, a dink mall, whatever, in Burggarten. If you go to Stadtpark, Who's there? Is that... Where's Mozart? I mean, Strauss is there. I mean, he is. He's right there. And then, like, hey, where's Mozart? You say, well, Mozart's over in Burggarten. And where are all these other people? Well, Goethe? I don't even know how to say that, but Goethe is going to be right down the street here. I mean, I should just give a walking tour of Vienna and go like, hey, it's a free walking tour with Steve Scotty on Instagram because he's an idiot and he's going to walk all the way from Westbahnhof to Kaiser Mühlen. I mean, I should think about that because when I get to Stephensplatz, what should I do? I mean, I mean, the closer you get, if I get halfway there, I should say, oh, well... Why not just go the whole way? It's Bird Garden, right? Yeah, with Mozart. Mozart. Yeah, Mozart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, 
Oh wow, look at that. That's a, I mean, that's new. They're directing traffic down here. Huh. Now, I mean, here's the interesting thing. So, if I really wanted to make a documentary, I can just download my own video and edit it and go like, hey, here's my walking tour, my free walking tour of Vienna when I walked from my house almost to Kaiser Mühlen because I needed some exercise. And I said, hey, I'm going to, like, relive my entire two-year experience in Europe in 30 minutes because... Now, that's Mozart. Now, I have one which is kind of funny with a bird on his head, like a crow. I mean, I've got... How many... I've got so many pictures of this thing. And today... There's not a bird, but there might be some bird poop somewhere. But Mozart's looking pretty good, actually. <laughs> and almost no one is here. They're taking photos. And they're going, who's this guy? And it's Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Yeah. I mean, in Salzburg, there's a much bigger one. No, he was born in Salzburg. Yeah. But... <laughs> I mean, that's cool. If you like classical music... I don't like too much. They like he classical does. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, but, but, okay. She's classical music. Classical music? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I love classical music. What's, yeah. your, what's your favorite Mozart concerto? Pan okay, pan pan which one? The numero. Do you, you speak Spanish? What, what, Spanish? Oh, wait, are you Italian? Where are you from? Yeah, Italian. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. I'm Italian. Italian too? No. Well, I have, I have an Italian passport. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm doing a... I'm broadcasting live on Instagram. Uh, I don't know his around. Well, it's okay. I'm just saying, I, I have a live video. Oh. I'm, I'm giving a walking tour of Vienna. You're from Italy? Yep. From where? What city? Uh, from near Naples. Napoli? Yep. Yeah. I live, you know where Bagnoli is? Bagnoli. Uh, Bagnoli. Yeah, yeah. Bagnoli. <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah. yeah. So you have to say Bagnoli. Bagnoli. So I'm going to work on my pronunciation. Uh, yeah, it's the right pronunciation, Bagnoli. Yeah, it's in the Bay of Naples. Mm -hmm. The Amalfi Coast, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, the mini What? There is so much fruit. Yeah, yeah, okay. I have to go. But, I mean, I, I see a lot of Italians in, yeah, in, in, Vienna. in, in, yeah, yeah. in Vienna. Yeah, in Vienna, yeah. In this period, yes. I mean, do you live here or are you just visiting? No, no just, just visiting. Just visiting. From, not, from Naples? Yep. Yeah. You know where the Pink Palace is? The Pink, pink, pink Palace. Pink Palace. It's a museum in Naples, Napoli. A big museum, it's pink. There's like. Mm, you ever heard of that? No. Are you sure? Well, no, but you know, the, is there still a NATO base there? NATO? 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 Yeah, but I think it's far away from where we usually. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, Naples is a big city. Yeah. It's yeah. And Bagnoli is like on the edge. It's not, it's on the edge, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's... Because you can yeah. see, like, what is it, Ischia? Ischia. Yeah. Ischia, yeah, Ischia, yeah Ischia, the Ischia. island. Yeah. The Ischia, what is it? Capri, Capri, Capri. Capri Ischia, That's too Capri. far away. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I, this is true. I'm giving a, a little tour. Now, I lived there in 1980. Before you were born, probably. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they told, there was a lot of smuggling. They had, Boats coming in and out, smuggling like uh, cigarettes. Yeah. I mean, there's still there a lot so of th th a lot of that goes on still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was just in Pisa, Pisa, Firenze. Pisa, yeah. Firenze. Yeah. So if I wanted to move to Italy, 
where should I go? Milano? No. Oh, you know Puglia? Puglia. You can try Abruzzo? Sicily. Sicily. Is Sicily. Sicily is Sardinia? Yeah. Mm, what about Sicily? So the mafia is down there. No. No, no, no. It's just um, a myth. Yeah. A myth. So it's, it's, a, it's a story. Yeah. It's a but the mafia is gone now. There is, but they don't touch you. They're nice. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. go like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I mean, do yeah, that. And Sicily is yeah. very, very a beautiful okay. country. Oh, now, what does this mean? When you do this, it means you're crazy. Huh? If I did this to you, what does that mean? This? Yeah, yeah. I think nothing. In Italian, no, no, no. I, how do you say, like, you're crazy, you're a sta loco, you know? It's, it's, ah. it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, what's the gesture? Like this? Oh, like this. You oh, point yeah, at yeah. your head yeah. and you go, hmm. Okay. Because I took Italian, I did, at the University of Minnesota before I came here. And my teacher, we didn't learn a lot about the language. We learned more about the culture. Yeah, yeah, music, gestures, I mean, counting. I mean, it's just silly, but I love Italy. I mean, the food's good. It's beautiful. I mean, food and family are like still. What, sorry? That's important. Well, Food no, no, and family. Numero uno. How do you say? Numero uno. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cuatro. Okay. <laughs> but so that's good. Yeah. Are you working? Oh, yeah. You're a student. Yeah, we are students. Yeah, you're like, like music, history. music, art, history. What do you say? Uh, no, I study art and... Uh, art? Yeah. Uh, Very good feeling. What is it? Oh, wait. I mean, the museum is over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The we, Earth Museum. We're just planning to go here. Over there? Yeah. Yeah, you have to go there. Because Raphael... I mean, they got all kinds of I shit I think in there. tomorrow we go <laughs> in the um, Art Museum. Tomorrow? This one? Yep. Yeah. And well, there's all kinds of them around, but this is a good one. I like this one. This evening we will go at the Natural Museum. And well, that's also over there. The Those are mirror images of each other. They're, they're like the same. But over here is the art. And over there is this history. Yeah. And they used to have like a Jurassic, they had a dinosaur, yeah, a mechanical see. dinosaur. No. Is that still there? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. We want, yeah, so I mean, we don't, program to how about the no. zoo? Have you been to the zoo? No. Show, show the zoo. We don't have much time. Oh, okay. You have to go back to Tomorrow. Naples, Napoli. Yeah, Tomorrow. Shiza. How do you say shit in Italian? Shit merda. Shit, merda? Merda. Uh, oh, merda. That's right. My, she said that. Merda. Merda. That's polite. That's a polite way to say, oh, shit, I gotta go back to Naples. Uh, kind of. Oh, merda, devo tornare a Napoli. Yeah, 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 okay. All right. <laughs> Are they from Italy, too, or no? They're not with you. No, no, no. It's just the four of you. Yeah. Uno, due, tre, quattro. Yes, yes. Quattro persona. Yeah. Persona? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye. All right. I mean, that was fun because they're Italian. <laughs> and I lived in Naples for almost a year in 1980. I mean, if I tried to speak Italian, I could probably learn that a lot easier than German, because I... And then your brain can only hold so much. I mean, that's my theory. It's like, hey, my brain is full. There's this neuroplasticity thing. Maybe if I forget some things that I already know and try to learn something new, my brain will, you know change somehow but if that were Alzheimer's that would be bad because there's a bunch of cobwebs in your brain you can't think straight so maybe I should do a, a mini mental status exam just to verify that I'm not completely insane yet because I know what that's like that's called psychosis But that's complicated. Now, this guy is Franz Joseph Numero Uno, I think. That's him. 
And then over there, there's another guy. I forget who that is. Somewhere. And then... What else we got? Oh, the Schmetterling house. In the pond with birds and ducks and things. Because it's spring and people are anxious to see the trees start blooming. And the weather warm up. And the sun come out. Because... It's the end of February and almost March. And it seems like spring is already here, it seems like. Now here's a bird. That's a pigeon. What other kind of birds we got? Um, those Russian crow things. This is the pond. I might have probably shouldn't jump in and get all wet because I'd have to change my clothes, but, um, and then there's the Schmetterling house. Now, I don't think I've ever been in, I know I went inside there, but I never bought a ticket to actually get a tour inside the Schmetterling house, but I did buy a bag once, I think, a little tote bag. And then, uh, yeah, Schmetterling House, over there. Now that's interesting because the light is kind of flashing. In real life, it doesn't do that. So why is that? Is that related to the frame rate of the camera? Is that like an optical illusion? Is my brain messed up and it makes it just look like a continuous shining thing instead of having blinking? Because maybe it is blinking. Because it's running off of a 50, 60 hertz power supply, maybe. But I don't know how that works. And then... Schmetterling house. Now over there somewhere is my blue wizard thing, I think. I have a photo of myself over there masquerading as a blue wizard up against that big tree somewhere, that one maybe. I think it was that one. Because that's a big tree. I think that's the biggest tree in the park here. Might be that one. That is a big tree. Bergarten. Folks Garden. Maria Tourism Plaza. Albertina. Now, I don't think I've ever been in the side of that place. There's a tour. Get to Gaza. His statue's down there. If you saw you say it, get to get to Gaza.
Privod Bog. That's probably Ukrainian. Privod. Oh, now here we go. So this is Albertina. And here's this monument over here to something with that horse and carriage thing. Escalator, Albertina. These horses. Now, there's something weird about the way that horse is standing because of the, the left or the right rear leg. I guess is resting, kind of. Well, they're together. But one is holding the weight and the other one's up in the air. So what does that mean? I don't know. That one's on all four. That one has the right rear leg up a little bit. So he might be sleeping. Is that one sleeping? Yep. The one on the right or the left? You don't know. I mean, the one on the right looks like he's sleeping. Yeah, the right one. No, no, no. Well, because I'm on my way, so... Maybe, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, there's Stefan's Plots. Yeah. I mean, that's the nice thing about churches, is they got those steeples that go up forever, and you can say, oh, yeah, there it is. That's the church. So now I know where I am. So if I just head that way, that will be the Udrai and Uainz. And I can say, hey... Should I walk to Kaiser Muna? Or should I get on the U I think it is? And just go there that way. That would be better because it'll take less time. And I already got a fair amount of exercise. And I have a Monad Carta, so it won't cost me any extra money. And, I mean, so this is an example of that why, why not thing. You go like, hey, why did I go in the first place? Because. And I'm already almost there, so should I turn back and not go because I'm tired and I'm, I can't afford to get there? No. Can I waste the rest of the afternoon because I already wasted most of the day already? Probably. Have I had a vacation recently? Well, that's kind of hard to figure out when you're self-employed. You're always kind of always working or thinking about your business, so I'm not sure that really counts. And then... uh, What's that thing? It's another fountain. With all these little figures doing something funny. Like this guy. That person. Those people. And that's not open yet. Oh, now here would be an opportunity to go to the Apple store. So I go like, hey, I need another bird. I can go throw a stone at Apple store in Vienna, Austria and say, hey, 
It's me. Can I check out that new cool virtual reality thing you got that costs 3,000 euros on my way to Kaiser Moon? And they'd say, well, maybe. And I'd say, well, do I have to make an appointment for that? And they'd say, well, yes, or no, or maybe. And I'd say, okay, can I see it? <laughs> Just show me one. <laughs> I don't want to put it on, but I'd like to see it. And I'm like, how much does it weigh? Is it really uncomfortable to wear? Can I actually see reality and virtual reality at the same time? Can you like fuse the images so I can kind of like have all the superimposed stuff added into my real world and just have them magically appear and I get to like play with them and push buttons and go, hey, look what that does. When I do that, it automatically reads a Rex ray and I don't have to even work anymore. I just push a button and it's like, hey, there it is, here's your report. <clears throat> and I go, hey, that looks good. Let's try that again. <laughs> oh, here's the Apple Store. I mean, maybe they have one of those at the um, the radiology meeting. I never thought about that. Here's the Apple Store. Now, I don't think I'm allowed to film in there. Maybe, because I did it once before, but it's kind of like a semi-private public place. It's a private business. And I have mixed feelings about them because, you know, because. I do like their stuff, though. Like my phone. I mean, that's me in the window. Is that me? Yeah, that's me. That's my reflection. And that's the Apple Store. And what do they got? I'm not sure what they got. They got... They got my, my, I don't have my laptop. I mean, I'm kind of upset about that because I don't. I left it at home. Like a stupid digital nomad guy said, Hey, why should I carry my laptop, which weighs not a lot, all the way to Kaiser Mullen in my bag when I can just use my phone... And then that'll save me some energy because it would. So that was okay. But it's still my laptop. And I go like, hey, why? And it's obsolete. It's an M1 chip. They have M2, M3s, M4s pretty soon. And then upstairs they got this um, Apple Pro thing. That guy's seen, I'm, I'm looking at the window. There, there's a dog in there. I mean, they let dogs inside the store. I can't believe that. I mean, that's not very hygienic. I mean, the dog's walking all over the floor. I mean, they must, like, got to do something with the floor at night because there's all kinds of dirt and bacteria and things that gets in and out of the store all the time. And then uh, someone's smoking marijuana around here because I can smell it. And cigarettes. I mean, this is a cigarette break area out here because there's a cigarette machine right over there. And there's a cigar shop. I need to go inside, I think. <laughs>